friends, it's Serena. I haven't said that in such a long time. <laughs> we are the Falco family. We are a family of readers, writers, and filmmakers, and we believe that life is full of lessons, so we live and we learn. This is our homeschool room tour. I'm so happy that this room is finally done and ready. This is our eighth year of homeschool, right in the middle of transitioning well into our unschooling journey. And this year of 2020 was supposed to be all about our live and learn tour. We were going to be traveling to 12 places for the 12 months of this year and then 2020. <laughs> because 2020 is a whole mood, uh, those plans came all crumbling down. We believe in creativity. We believe in hashtag being flexible. So we had to get creative and switch things up a bit. And we decided to focus on our homeschool spaces. Our summer project was our backyard space and building our garden. And in being in our garden, there's just so many lessons to learn. And I think it gave us the time to rest and relax and think. We decided to focus our energies on reimagining and redoing our homeschool space, since it seems that instead of being out and about on our Live and Learn tour in the world, we're probably going to be more safe at home than we thought we were going to be. And that's okay, because your friends know how to pivot. This got us really into um, jumping into our plans of creating our first film together where we are learning all the things about filmmaking in general and storytelling and letting that be a part of our homeschool and lives but this is not for play we are doing real research working our creative gifts in order to begin building our filmography together building our business back up again as the Falco creative a family of filmmakers starting one film at a time that is is the vision and this is the journey so we wanted to create a space that would allow us to move forward in our dreams and goals for our homeschool and our life hopefully you would have already seen the first videos from this homeschool room makeover series and if you haven't just make sure that you check the description and the links above to check those out first before you find yourself here or watch this one first and then go back and see how it all kind of came together. I absolutely love how it's all turned out. So are you ready for a little tour? Good morning. Welcome to our 2020 homeschool room tour. I thought I would just talk my way through the room and show you around. I really love it. Very similar to our old room. Obviously there are um, lots of new updates that I guess I'll just kind of go ahead and talk through. What I wanted more than anything was for it to be a peaceful, comfy, cozy place for us to have lots of conversation and continue to explore and discover all the things. We have two or three other homeschool room tours that I will link in the description box so you can see how our room has evolved. First of all, we have new flooring. This definitely had to happen. We had old yucky carpet in here that served us well for so many years um but it had to go so that was the first thing that happened to the room then the next thing we did was paint uh, there were holes all over the wall for many years of hanging posters and things and so that was definitely something on brian's to-do list so he went and patched up all the holes and things which meant that it was a nice opportunity to go ahead and paint. So that's what we did. Um, I really wanted a shade of blue, kind of the colors that go with the Falco family, different shades of blue. I chose a blue that was not this one. I wanted one to be like a little bit more of a gray tone, but we ended up with this tropical type of Skittle blue. <laughs> it was a whole thing, but we learned to pick our battles in life. So we went ahead and did the three walls, one, two, and our chalk wall and it is still our chalk wall is just a different color over here in this corner these are just two shelves that used to live on this side of the room and we just moved them to this side of the room grab this bookshelf because i wanted to have a little spot that was kind of sort of a place to keep the things that they might be using throughout the day but also to have like a little teacher nook 
over here. Cleared out all of the clutter, reorganized the stuff, and created nice little cubes in order to resources they need to go down whatever trail that their curiosities lead them. So this is my little teacher corner, my Bible and my planner, and any of the other things that I need just right in this corner here. Um, over here, I just have four main bins for things that I know for sure they would use throughout the day. So this is actually our, um, this holds our chalk and our post-its and our walkie-talkies are in here. These are our games that we might pull from and play throughout the day. These are all of our card-like resources. So our Fandex is in here and then math cards. These are money cards that I made. So all of those type of flash card type materials are in this box. And then down here, these are all of our letters and our numbers. Our stamps are in that spot right there. Here is, like I said, where I keep my things. This is what holds um, a lot of my plans from earlier weeks and any printables that I might want to pull from. All of our clipboards. The last one here holds all of our laminating uh, pages. Business card templates because we might use them creatively for different things. So that is what lives in there. And these two are empty as well. Like I said, I like to keep empty spaces because you never know what you're gonna want to have in different places around the room based on how you are living and learning together, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So our friend Buddy found a new home here. <laughs> and I think he's happy. But that is my little teacher's lounge slash teacher's corner. Um, right now, I imagine that we're gonna switch these little shelves out with different books and things. It'll also be a great way for me to display our curriculum book stacks uh, when we're sharing on Instagram. But for now, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purities. This used to hang in the boys' room, and we just went ahead and transitioned it into here because it's something that I want them really to hold on to. And then we have our calendar. This is another item that normally lives in our studio space, but I thought it would be great to go ahead and bring it in here just to have it displayed for the kids to see what is going on in the month in advance. A lot of family things and even maybe things that I want them to work on. Um, I think it would be great to block out that time using their color coding system. So uh, they've been color coded since the day they were born. <laughs> so Cameron is blue, Kendall is green, and Savannah is pink. And it's been a great way for me to communicate. So I'll use those different colored Expo markers to write on their calendar so that we have clear communication around here. Our curriculum really is life and books. <laughs> books that hold stories about life, okay? Because we are all about living and learning over here. One of the centerpieces of our room this year that may be slightly understated but it's going to be a big deal for us is our TBR card. It used to be our art card and we turned it into a TBR card, a to be read card, that is going to hold their book stacks, which is how we do curriculum around here. And then our journals to document it all. So we have all of our annotation type of supplies here and then our books will get stacked here that we're using for current times curriculum I guess is how I would like to say it and this just gets tucked right right into that corner and then over here this has all of our stickers and stamps and things that we use to add a little bit of love to our journals and their stamps, stickers. And then also their Polaroid film is here as well for a little um, mini printer. And that just stays right in that corner. So let's talk about this corner. <laughs> this is where our library lives and I absolutely love the way it has turned out. I just wanted it to be a home for all of our books. As far as our books are concerned, I won't go through how it's organized just yet. I think I'll save that. Um, for another video, but I love the way that it turned out and I love more than anything how functional it's going to be. Um, and then we have Cam's plant. So Cameron's pothos 
has been thriving. And so I thought I would give him a new home um, by putting him at the top of our bookshelf and letting him just keep on growing. I love the way it looks, just kind of fountaining down the bookshelf. Makes the kids all sorts of happy inside. Then I had to make sure that our printables were ready for the kids to use in all different kind of ways. I am sharing about how we use our basic printables in order to provide a bit of structure and guidance to their research, their writing, their studies. So we needed to have a nice central spot for them. Right beside our table here is all of our printables that we would use throughout the day. I wanted to make sure they were nice and accessible for the kids so they are right next to their table. And then there's our maps. <laughs> our maps have to be the, the focal point of our room. There's no better way to discover the world when you are safe at home. Having them displayed, they are also going to be the focal point for our now virtual live and learn tour because we don't let our dreams just fizz and die away. These are our two tried and true maps that we've had for quite a long time. But then we have our scratch maps that are down here that we are going to be using very heavily for geography and we are very, very excited about. Well, I'm very excited about and they will be too once we start scratching things off. As part of the way that we are adjusting to not going on our live and learn tour this year, um, we are gonna be trying to do a little bit of a virtual traveling the world and these scratch maps are gonna play a big part in that. Um, I have a couple more scratch maps, one of them being over in this spot here next to our plants. We moved our message boards from our studio space into our, our homeschool space. That is where our history timeline is gonna live. I have a series of videos on our transition into more of a, just a creative approach to redefining the subjects. And for history, we are going to be traveling back in time. All I can think about y'all is history has its eyes on me <laughs> because Hamilton has been on heavy rotation during this whole um, homeschool setup situation. But um, I've gotten a lot of inspiration for how we are going to move forward in history. I've done a video all about that and about the other subjects, just redefining what subjects mean to us in our homeschool and life. So I'm so excited about how we're going to be continuing to approach history. So when we are doing our watch parties or doing our work at the table, I just wanted to have spaces all over that was easy for us to write questions we have or rabbit holes that we want to follow. Um, I just wanted to have spaces all over the room where those things could be jotted down. So that is our message board slash notice board over there. And then we can write on it with expo markers. We can write on it with chalk markers, whatever we want to do. Um, and then there's little clips here also for us to hang pictures and other things. And then there are the little spaces all around the room that I just imagine in my head that they would complete work. Uh, one of the biggest things this time around was our sofas in the room. I removed the desk and the work boxes because I really wanted um, a conversational space. So I wanted spots and spaces for them to be able to do their reading and do their writing, their researching and their studying. But um, I just thought it was time to create more of a conversational space. It would be nice and cozy for all of the reading and the writing and the researching and the studying that we're going to be doing this year. There were a lot of big changes. The flooring, the rug of course, which I absolutely love, the different shades of blue, and also because it's really busy. And I imagine the space, while it's pretty clear right now, the walls are pretty clear right now, um, I imagine that it's going to be full of all the things that we are studying, that we're exploring, that we're discovering. So I wanted to make sure I had something nice and heavy, a heavy design on the floor to kind of uh, match the fact that there's going to be a lot of busyness going on in here based on what we get into this year. These are futons. <laughs> They're so soft and cozy. I love them we decided to remove the tables obviously it's a futon so it turns into a little bed which i thought would be great for our movie nights and our watch party these are my two little beanbag chairs which we kept i need to actually wash them but the kids love tossing them around in different areas just plopping them down to read or flip on is more like it <laughs> in addition to those 
uh, seating areas. We always sit on the floor. Uh, we still have our circle table. It gives us a space to be able to sit together at the round table and complete work. This table came from Ikea. We've had it for several years and we just covered it this year. Some of the cork, I guess, material, the inside material began to pop out and you kind of can't see it, which is kind of a good thing um, because we covered it with this wood green contact paper. I wanted to point that out because I love the fact that so many of the things in our space are things we've had for many years. And when I look around the room, I love having uh, pieces stay in our room that reminds us of different parts of the journey. So this is our workstation. Uh, we kept the round table here and right in the center is our little wooden caddy which holds markers and pencils and all of those supply types of things and we just move it around based on wherever we needed to go and then I have two other chairs that are out in our studio space that we bring in when we want to pull this table out and sit all together TV up here same thing it just used to be right down here before but it is great for our watch parties watching our documentaries and then just watching cartoons in the morning for breakfast I like the simplicity of the room this time around ignore this cord so I wanted to leave a lot of area to add what we need to it um, in the past I have just put what I wanted wherever I wanted it and I think that it'll be a good change to jump into our days and figure out what types of things are gonna go in the different storage spaces so I have storage boxes here and here that are currently empty and um, once we are working through our days our weeks um, we will fill them with things based on what serves us best we have a little message board up here that I grabbed from Ikea that I really like because it came with quite a bit of characters, numbers, and letters. We starting things off with our question everything, assume nothing, and learn the truth. And make sure you are following us at the Falco family on Instagram. My last finishing touch found these super cute um, coffee tables that I thought was great for holding snacks and coffee, books, or being able to sit on the floor together and do our writing. We had a shelf that used to live in the boys' room that we moved into the homeschool space, and this is just kind of like our display area. Our astronaut helmet, our Roman soldier helmet, just all the cute stuff, you know. It's <laughs> still functional, but cute. Oh, and our lights. We couldn't forget our lights. Um, we've had those lights for so long, but they make the space so magical, especially on days where um, it's a bit gloomy and rainy and just we have our lights on and we get to lay out and read together and talk. So I could not build our room back up again without adding our lights because it's kind of our thing. <laughs> so I had to replace several of the bulbs, but we did that and got them back up into their um, rightful place. Oh, I did not address the chalk wall. <laughs> so we've had the chalk wall for forever, but we wanted to switch it up a little bit. So instead of getting rid of the chalk wall, what we actually did was paint it. It's the same old chalk wall, but it has a new look. We just got untinted chalkboard paint to paint over the blue color, and it's kind of perfect. I kind of kind of love it. <laughs> we don't always use the chalk wall all the time so on weeks or months where we're not using it I wanted to hang up bulletin boards and whiteboards. I had three bulletin boards that I've had since the beginning of our homeschool life that I just kind of refinished a little bit by painting over them just and then also the whiteboard and I just thought they looked really nice uh, grouped together so they will live there to showcase our work and display things that we're working on um, when we are not using the chalk wall as a whole for like a unit or anything like that and then when it's time to get some stuff on the chalk wall for unit purposes then we can just pull those bulletin boards down and tuck them in our homeschool closet until we're ready to use them again there's so much in our space that has been with us from the beginning like the bulletin and message boards they're things that I've just repurposed and, and I love that because and every year I get something different or add something to the space it becomes this beautiful combination of all these things over these years that help you remember 
how far you've come. So one year was our chalk wall, another year was our work boxes, and then another was our circle table, and another was our bookcase. And then over the years, you just have little reminders all around the room about each year of your homeschool journey. And now we are on to year eight. We love our homeschool room, but homeschool happens in so many different places. In the backyard, in the living room, in the car. Living and learning is a mindset. It's not just about the room. So tell us in the comments, what are your favorite spaces to live and learn together with your family? I hope you enjoyed our series on our homeschool space makeover for this year. And I hope you're excited about all of the adventures that are to come because we're in this thing together. Because the algorithm is a whole mess and is against us but it's cool I just want to make sure that all of you that are here for our journey are actually seeing the content that we're producing if you enjoy these videos give them a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed hit the notification bell and make sure you're following us on Instagram and we will see you in our next video Bye. what is happening why can't I film in peace this is always so weird <laughs> Okay, here's 30 minutes of a wrap. You like our homeschool room? Mm -hmm. Is it cozy? <laughs> what do I say? Cozy. <laughs> Is the homeschool room nice and cozy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't, Don't forget, forget to subscribe! To subscribe.